Thank you for joining me today for this Sky ATP in action demonstration video. Continuing from our previous video for Sky ATP device enrollment, we can see our SRX 1500 is still enrolled with a premium tier and our current license expiration date. Let's dive right in. First, we'll take a look at the monitoring section of the Sky ATP portal. The first details we see is the host section of our Sky ATP portal, our command and control server section, our file scanning section with HTTP file downloads, email attachments, manual upload, and then our email quarantine for SMTP traffic. We have a detailed view of our SMTP quarantine information along with the summary view as seen here. Let's take a walkthrough with our user experience and our administrator experience when protected by the Sky ATP SMTP service. We can see here that user1 at badpacket.com has received several emails. We'll select one of the quarantined emails and examine it for its content. The user believes that this should be a released email and be allowed to pass through to his inbox. The user opens the portal for Sky ATP and requests to release this email. Now, let's take a look at the administrator's perspective. When the administrator opens their inbox, we'll see that the admin at badpacket.com has received a couple of emails. The first is the quarantine notification that an email was quarantined, and the second is our release request. The administrator can review the notification for quarantine email with the name of the file and the threat level. After reviewing the quarantine notification, the administrator can review the release request. By clicking on the link in the email that the administrator receives and being directed to the Sky ATP portal, the administrator can decide to release the email or delete the email. In this example, our administrator will release the email. Shortly after the email is released, we can see that admin at badpacket.com receives a notification that the email has been quarantined and released. Now, let's take a look at user 1 and see the email as it comes through for user 1. Because this email was suspected to be potentially malicious in its content, we'll see that user 1 opens the email and has two attachments. The email with its attachments has been released by Sky ATP, but because the attachments are suspected to be infected, they've been contained in a zip file with a second attachment as the password to unzip that file. This is for the user's protection. Next, Let's take a look at Sky ATP's security intelligence platform that provides protection for command and control server communication from inside the network to outside. We'll see that the current user is able to browse the internet and get to the Juniper Network's website. Now let's see what happens when our user loads a known command and control URL. We can see that the URL is failing to load. Let's transition back over to the Sky ATP portal. The first thing we'll notice is in our dashboard, client 111 is now a threat level of five, whereas previously it was a threat level of zero. Here in the host entry for client 111, we can see a time range of indicators of compromise for this particular client. We see down below in the current threat lists that there was a command and control server communication. When we click on that command and control server, we can then get some more detailed information. We see iWar.net has been identified by Sky ATP for this particular client. For a more broad perspective of our command and control server environment 
and what communication has transpired, we can click on the command and control server location in the left banner and get a more summarized view. As we see here, there have been four attempted communications to command and control servers that have all been blocked. Now let's transition to the Sky ATP Advanced Anti-Malware Protection Service. We see here that our user is attempting to download some files. The initial file that we're going to try to download is a malware file. Notice at the bottom of the browser there was a network error. Sky ATP has blocked that file from being downloaded by this user. We can return to our previous browser tab and reload the Juniper Networks website. Here you'll notice that the website reloads without any issue. This is because the malware file was blocked from being downloaded and thereby the user was not needed to be added to the infected host feed. Here we see another indication of compromise where the browser was attempting to download a secondary unseen malware file. We'll look here and notice that both files were blocked from being completely downloaded and the user is not able to execute the malicious payload. Now let's return to our original browser tab and attempt to load a new website. This time we'll try to go to news.google.com. Now our browsing fails. Let's investigate why. We return to our Sky ATP portal to find that Client 111 is now a threat level of 8. If we drill down a little bit deeper, we see our command and control hit from earlier. We see our two files that were attempted to be downloaded, and they were both classified as malware hits. The Sky ATP Advanced Machine Learning will correlate these three events and assign a very granular 1 through 10 threat score to this particular host. As we continue our security analysis of this event, we can drill down to the malicious file and find out more details about what host 111 was attempting to download. We see the file name, we see the type of malware that it was identified, and we can see the behaviors by severity that this particular malware exhibited. For a bit deeper understanding, we can look at the Network Activity tab and see what DNS was queried by the malware package. We can then go up to our host section in the left ribbon and we can see that our host 111 is now a threat score of 8 and it is also included in the infected host feed. After our security operators corrected the issue on our laptop and resolved client 111's security concerns, we can go in and change our investigation status to be resolved and fixed. We now see in the time range that our threat score has returned back to zero. Upon returning to our user, we can now see we should be able to load and browse to normal websites again. Thank you very much for joining me to see Sky ATP in action.